Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Jason Bent and today uh, I'm going to be branching out into the and more portion of my channel uh, for the first time really. So this video I'm going to be explaining how you go about installing the LifeProof vinyl flooring from Home Depot. This is not a sponsored video. I bought all the flooring. Uh, it's just something that I've been doing a lot in my house because we recently moved into this home in February, no, April. Yeah, <laughs> we moved here in April. Um, and we've been doing a lot of renovations and there's a lot of stuff that I think would be really helpful to share with you guys, so I'm going to. But before we get into that, uh, I just wanna apologize. The lighting is not the best. Uh, this is the first time I've been shooting in the house. Obviously, I don't have the great lights that I have out in the shop, so uh, I'll try to do my best. And then the audio, you probably hear quite a bit of an echo. Well, that's because there's nothing in the room, so there's nothing absorbing that sound. But we'll go ahead and get through it. Uh, I'm just gonna kinda walk you step by step how you go about installing uh, this click together vinyl flooring. Super, super easy. And I've done it myself in multiple rooms in the house now. Uh, and so I just figured I'd take this opportunity to show you guys how to do it. So let's get started. So I wanna first start out by just showing you a couple of the things that I'm going to be using throughout this process uh, and that I found work very well. First thing, uh, which to me I think is the most important is some sort of knee protection because you're gonna be down on all fours for an extended period of time. Uh, I've used both knee pads um, and I've also used these. These are just uh, these things called slides. Um, you basically use them for working out. You can like put your hands on them and slide different places to do core workouts. Anyways, these work really good because they slide around very easily and they're padded and cushioned. So uh, I'll be using those. The next thing is just a standard hammer. Comes in pretty handy. A dead blow mallet. Uh, this is just an inexpensive East Wing one from one of the home stores. I've got some green tape, or you could use blue tape or masking tape or whatever you want. I'll show you what I use that for. My tape measure, uh, some sort of blade, knife. Uh, this is going to be used to cut the flooring. I've got a Sharpie or something to mark with. Uh, and then some sort of T-square, and you can see that in the thing. This is just a, a Woodpecker's TS-12. It's one I use for woodworking. Um, but this acts as a straight edge when I am cutting uh, the sh different sheets of vinyl flooring. And then this is an example of some of the flooring. And so this is some that's left over from uh, previous flooring installs. And I always keep some. Uh, and even if I didn't have any, I would definitely take a piece uh, out of the box that I got and cut a few pieces up. And so this one, I'll show you when I cut my pieces what I use this one for. Again, just a cut off scrap. And I have two smaller pieces that I cut down uh, and more importantly, you'll see this again in a second. I don't know if it's gonna focus, there you go. You see how that has that pointed edge? Um, that's the edge that I want to use. Uh, you don't have to use that edge, but this will make sense once I get into it. But just two small pieces like that because one of them will wear out by the time you get to the end. Um, and these are gonna be used to uh, basically hit the pieces into each other to make sure that they lock together. And then lastly, uh, this is just a little 12 inch pry bar. Um, this is just a, a cobalt one, uh, really inexpensive. I bought this and uh, this works really, really good. And I'll show you what I use this for when we get to that point. Uh, going back to these real quick. So they do make these little plastic blocks that you can get that is actually for doing what I'm gonna use these for. Uh, two things, one, I couldn't find it. And two, it's an unnecessary expense when I can just take scraps and do the exact same thing. And it's really, really easy. So. Uh, let's go ahead and get started and I'll kind of talk you through what I did for the room to prep it to start installing the flooring. So the first thing that I did to the room is I came in and I started to rip out all the carpet. And to rip out the carpet, I just cut it up into manageable sections and then just pulled it out very easily, rolled it all up and got it out of the room. After I got all the carpet out of the room, I went through and peeled out all of the padding that goes underneath the carpet. After that, I went around the exterior of the room removing all of the tack strips. Then I went ahead and removed all the baseboards because they will get adjusted because I didn't want to use quarter round by putting in the vinyl flooring. It will actually bring it down a little bit and the only way to fill that gap would be with quarter round or replacing the molding. So we're gonna go ahead and replace those baseboards now. And then I go around and make sure that I get everything swept up and everything really, really nice and clean and make sure that there's no debris underneath. Okay, so when you walk in my room, this is the far back left corner. And so I wanna lay my flooring out across this direction. 
and work my way from the back wall all the way up to the door and the closet because I'll just have to worry about cutting everything out around different things uh, at the end as opposed to the beginning. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through how to get this first row laid down. Then when we get to the second row, I'm gonna kind of talk about um, how it clicks into the other piece and how you go about doing it. And then I'm just gonna go through the entire process. And as I hit different points uh, that I think things are valuable to share, I will share those. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some of the pieces out of the box. Each box is about 20 square feet worth of uh, coverage. And I think like seven panels come in each box. Um, I wanna stand these up against the wall. So you're supposed to have about a quarter of an inch gap uh, from the wall. What I have found works really well is just taking a couple of these, taping them to the wall uh, just to stop it from going underneath the drywall. And so we're going to do that, but here's what I use the hammer for. Um, obviously I want to make sure that there's nothing inhibiting it, but right here I've got a couple of brad nails from the baseboard, so I want to make sure I remove those because I need these to sit flat against the wall. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that first one, place it nice and tight against the wall, and it doesn't have to be right in the corner. It's really just to stop any piece from going in. And then I'm going to take some of this tape and I'm just going to tape it so it stays upright. And again, these will come off and I'll actually use these on the flooring for the room. This is a lot easier than trying to manage uh, small little spacers that you can get. Because as soon as you knock one of these boards into it, it they just fall down and it's a huge pain in the butt. So. This is a technique that I find works really, really well. And once you get about five or six rows down and you get some weight to the flooring, these don't even have to stay up. Just enough to hold it in place. And if it's sticking out a little bit at the bottom, like most drywall, uh, it's not gonna be straight, that's fine because as you push it, it's gonna push it in uh, nice and tight. So go ahead. We'll get that on. I'll probably do uh, maybe two more along this back wall and I'll do one right here in the corner for the same reason because I don't want it to get pushed under this way as well. Okay, so there's two sides to each one of these panels. On this side, you have that piece, uh, the very tiny little gray lip that I showed you that I'm gonna use for my other pieces. And then you have this opposite side where there's the very prominent gray portion where you can actually see where it locks in. Well, I want that to be facing away from the wall because my next piece is going to click in to this portion. So I've got my one section back against the wall, go ahead and push it back, tight to the corner, in those spacers, and that's all you have to do for your first uh, piece. And now I'm gonna go ahead and click in my second piece to uh, the first. And before we go any further, something I wanna mention is uh, your concrete, right? Depending on what kind of subflooring you have, I have concrete. One of the steps is you wanna make sure that it's all flat, there's no debris, uh, if there's any major cracks, you go ahead and fix that now. Uh, mine is nice and flat, nothing uh, alarming or nothing significant, but that's not the purpose of this video. Um, and there's some other great videos out there that talk about how you can go about fixing it if you have something wrong with your concrete. But since I don't, I can't show you guys. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and continue on with the flooring install. Now what we're gonna do is if I show you the bottom of this, you'll see. This has a protruding gray portion and there's a little lip here and that lip fits in to this notch here. And again, I wanna make sure that my dominant protruding edge is facing towards me. Right now at this point, since I'm going uh, towards the wall instead of working from the other direction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Get this board nice and level, or nice and straight, and you can see that this is sticking up from this piece. And all I have to do to get this in, at this point, is take my dead blow mallet, and 
and get that nice and fully seated. And then I'm just gonna feel, I've got a spot. And now it's nice and smooth. This piece is now attached to this piece. And that's all you do until you get all the way to the end. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set down my third plank and I am not even wide enough to do three full planks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this plank and right here is where I need to cut it. But remember this end needs to click into that. So I'm obviously not gonna cut it there. I have to cut the length on the other end to make sure it fits. So there's a few different ways that you can do this. So the first thing that I need to do is I'm gonna turn this to where the portion I need facing towards me is actually gonna be facing towards the wall. And I still want the top because the bottom's black and you're gonna have a hard time uh, seeing any markings that you do. This is the end that's going to get cut off, right? We don't need this portion. So I'm gonna slide this down towards the wall and get it nice and close. And then I'm gonna look right down here and this is where I'm gonna use my marker. And I'm going to mark where this needs to be cut. I just use my Sharpie. I'm gonna mark that section. The other technique that you can do, which just takes more time, is you just use the tape measure, figure out how long it needs to be, take your tape measure, put it on the board, mark your line, cut it out. But just by flipping this over, it's just really, really simple to get a quick reference. The, the biggest thing you need to make sure you remember is to reverse this so you're cutting off the end that you need to cut off. So I'm gonna cut off this end, and then now it will fit once I put it in the proper way. So now I'm gonna show you real quick how to go about actually cutting this. Okay, so to cut, each one of your pieces. Um, this is gonna be a kind of a difficult example to show you because it's, it's when you're closer to the edge, it's a lot more difficult to break it, but we'll still get it done. Um, this is where that extra piece came in, and this is really just to catch the blade from going down and dinging the concrete. And one thing is you wanna make sure that you have a relatively sharp knife because that'll help this process quite a bit. So this is where the T-square comes into play. So I can take my T-square, put it right on that line, And then I'm just going to start making cuts. And the first one, I always just go kind of light to get that nice line and I'm not shifting my T-square. And I'm just gonna make multiple passes. And you can hear my blade is going into this other piece instead of coming off and hitting the concrete. And when you have a piece that's so close to the end like this, it's really important that you try to get as nice and clean and deep of a cut as possible because it will make it easier to break. Otherwise, these tiny little end pieces are a little challenging. Now, another technique you could use uh, is just a miter saw. If you had a miter saw that is mobile and in the room with you, uh, could make really quick work of it. Okay, so now we have a prominent cut. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this over and you're just gonna crack it back. That's all you're gonna do, just like that. Now I have uh, the piece that's hanging on with the underlayment. Um, this is a good time to talk about this. Typically flooring, you wanna have some sort of underlayment. Everything is built into this. So you literally remove everything from your floor and then you can just install this directly over it. I'm gonna take my blade just cut through that material, pull it off, and now my piece is ready to be installed. So now we'll go ahead and get our last piece put on here. All right, I've got my proper spacing down on the end. And now we're gonna go ahead and start doing the second row. All right, so normally what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to take your cutoff from the other end and you start your next row. However, unfortunately, this is just too small to do that, right? We don't wanna start with a piece that's only two inches wide. So plenty of things you can do here. Uh, luckily for me, I have all my scraps from my previous um, 
flooring install jobs. So I have one right here that will work. And this is what gives you the random line pattern. And so by doing this, I know that when I get to the end, I should have a cutoff that I can come back and use uh, to start the next row. And you would just continue to do that over and over again, and eventually it will repeat itself. So for this, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start off with this piece. And this piece slides, see how I have it at an angle. It's because this little tiny lip fits in and underneath that piece there. So I can take this and slide it down and it's in contact. So I'm just gonna push it all the way down to the end. I'm gonna drop it down. And this is where this comes into play. And so this is how I'm gonna ensure that it's tapped together and is seated properly. And I'm just holding this up at a slight angle and I'm hammering it, making sure that the seam closes up. Looks like right here. One good tap and we're good to go. And so now I have my second piece in and ready to install my next full piece. And this is where the process can start to become very quick. And I cannot stress enough just how easy this flooring install is. So now what I'm gonna do is I have two areas that I need to go into. I have this, this back row and then I also have this. So I always start on the long portion first, slide it down and drop it down. The first thing I'm gonna do Lock in the end-to-end -end portion. Then I'm going to take my block. Give that a nice tap. And now I will follow this exact same step to do all of the flooring. And then when we get to the doorways and everything like that, I'll bring you in for some tips uh, in those sections. Now that I have some better lighting, I wanted to bring you guys in closer to show you what I was talking about before. So as you can see, these are the protruding parts that have a little trench in them. And these are the uh, places where this thin portion that I've been using to hammer everything in fits in. So it goes in like this, and then it drops straight down, and that's the locking action. So in the beginning I was explaining that back portion rests in the piece and you can slide it left or right like you see here. I have my piece up at an angle. So what you're doing is to install this next piece, I'm sliding it down to where it's touching and then I'm going to drop it down and notice how this one is higher than this one. And so this is where you're going to hammer it down. So now that's nice and level. And then there's a slight gap right here. And so I'm gonna zoom in and show you as I'm using my piece with the mallet to push this into the other board and how it's gonna close up that seam. You should be able to see on camera, I don't know if you can see it perfectly, but um, there's a nice little seam here and we're, we need to get this back so it's nice and tight against that. So I'm going to use my block, probably one blow with a mallet, and it's gone. There's no more seam. You almost can't even tell where the two pieces meet, minus, you know, obviously the change in the, the grain. But that's just a better look of what I was referring to in the beginning. Got you in handheld mode here for just a second, so it's not going to be super clean. But I just wanted to show you now that we got about half the room done, the difference that you see in where the planks start and that natural change in the length. So right here we got a short one, middle length one, almost a full length one, and we've got a full length one right here. So it naturally works, it way, works its way out. And then obviously you see the different color and stuff and they're all random 
um, in the boxes, but each one of the boxes uh, is pretty much the same. So it ends up working real nice. Let me get some better color. So, so far so good. And uh, now I can probably go ahead and take those off and start using them. But I'm gonna go ahead and get up to the doorways and then that's when I'll give you guys some more pointers and tips on what to do when you get to those. All right, so now we've come up to uh, what's gonna be potentially an issue, right? <laughs> because I need to get this under the door jam. And this happens fairly frequently. Um, as you can see, uh, the people that built the house when they were putting in the other flooring, uh, you can see down here they actually cut part of that out already, but um, it's a little bit close for comfort. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that scrap piece that I used to cut into, and then I'm gonna take this uh, reversing back saw, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut into this using this as my guide, so it's obviously gonna cut just a little bit above that, so everything will fit real nice. There'll be a very small gap, and I'm just gonna cut it back, and then that way the new piece will fit in there just fine. Um, another tool that you can use is a multi-tool, um, which is what I would prefer to use. However, I don't have one with me. So this is what I'm gonna be using. get that cleaned out, but now you can see my board will slide under just fine and give me the little gap that I need for my transition, which here I will not be installing a transition yet because we still have not replaced the flooring in the bathroom. So this will just stay like this until we place the flooring, but now I have easy access right underneath. And one of the last steps that I'll do in this room is repaint the trim. So if I have any cuts or anything like that, and get taken care of. All right, so now is where things can start to get a little bit tricky. And that's when you have to start working around molding. So the best way that I've found to do this is I'm gonna take the full length and I'm gonna slide it all the way over to where it's touching the board that it's gonna be connecting into. So let's push it all the way up, push it over, and so now I know that this is where my board's gonna sit. And so the first mark that I wanna make is gonna be a mark that's gonna be the notch that gets taken out this way. What I wanna do is I wanna cut so this is still gonna be underneath this molding right here. So I'm gonna cut right there. And so that's my first mark that I need to make. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my board and I'm gonna put it to where it is almost touching here. Obviously we have that little ridge, so I can't get it all the way in, but that's fine. And I wanna apply the same principle. So I wanna make my mark right around here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw this in a straight line out here and I'm gonna come down with this line here, and this is gonna be the section that I cut out. Now, to transfer these lines, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up, and I wanna get the measurement for this line just so I don't go way past it, because I am using a permanent marker. So, this is going to be 11 and 3 eighths. So, I wanna scribe this line to 11 and 3 eighths all the way back. And now, I can take my T-square and just scribe this line down to that point. And this is the section that I will be cutting out, so this will fit around this corner. So, how do you cut this out? Well, there's a million ways that you can cut it out, and I'm not here to tell you which way is best. I'll probably just go in and uh, use a bandsaw. Uh, a jigsaw, anything you want. This is all gonna be concealed. You're not gonna see it, so it's really not gonna be that big of an issue. I'm gonna go cut it out, I'll bring it back in, we'll fit it in place, and then I will show you another uh, tip because 
once you start getting close to the walls like this, you obviously can't bash the piece in. So I'm gonna show you how I go about doing that. All right, so once the piece is cut, I'm gonna slide it down in. And so one of the key aspects to this flooring is that you're able to turn it up, you know, at an angle to get these things underneath. Well, you can't always do that, especially here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this over to where I'm touching that next board. I'm gonna double check everything, make sure that there's no visible cuts. Everything looks really, really good. And so the first thing that I wanna do is pound down the end to lock that edge in place. And then this is where this tool comes in very, very handy. And what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna put it against the wall you need a lot of leverage to get this to basically force itself underneath and lock in place. And so by using this pry bar and just lifting up, if you heard that click, that was the click of this locking in. And so now what I can do is use the block just like I would for anything else and uh, hit in the rest of this. Couple of good blows with the mallet and everything closes up nice and tight. And so that is how you make your cuts uh, around the different molding and you can still get a nice tight seam by following those steps. So now I'm just gonna finish up this small portion of the closet and we'll be all done. So as you can see, we've got the flooring all installed. Uh, just took a few hours and that was with filming. So it's really not a difficult process. Uh, I think this is the fourth room that I've done this in now. And obviously I'm by no means an expert when it comes to installing flooring. It's just after going through the process multiple times, there's a lot of really useful things that I learned and I wanted to share that with you guys. So I hope you found the information helpful. And if you wanna see more videos uh, like this, please let me know down in the comment section below. One of the things with moving into a new house is doing a lot of renovation stuff. Um, and changing over rooms and we still have furniture and stuff that we need to build for this room and other rooms in the house and so this is all just kind of part of it as always everybody i really appreciate you taking the time to watch if you want to find out more about who i am and what all i do uh, head over to my website bentswoodworking.com and you can find all kinds of information there that's going to do it for this video until next time get out in the shop try something new and i'll see you in the next video thanks